Wake up and take cover Hurry about in your slumber It's the dawn of the dead Now hell is up and upon us Can't trust no other Your father or even mother Sisters or brothers Aunties, nephews, nieces or uncles Not even lovers Hey everyone I know it's been a minute since I did a video Probably February, March Before this whole quarantine thing started Now the quarantine thing didn't hinder I didn't get COVID or anything like that But I just didn't There wasn't a lot of places to go to to find new stuff i've been buying a lot of stuff online don't get me wrong but i didn't feel it was appropriate to do a freak's finds if i didn't go out and find anything now today i did go out and i did find some stuff but i didn't want to come back with the freak's finds and i didn't want to come back with an off the shelf i've been thinking about a new idea and i didn't know what to call it so i'm just going to go with my first original name that's expectation versus reality the concept of this series is to blind buy and watch or just blind watch something on a streaming service and before I watch it give you an idea what I think it's going to be and give you a, a preemptive rating what I think I'm going to give it and then afterwards give you the full rundown of it and give my real rating and see where I fall where if, where my expectations were versus where they landed so the first movie I want to um, do on this series is this little film here called Mask Mutilator. Now, I'd never heard of this movie. Uh, I saw Severin put it out, and it was out of stock. I ended up getting it on a family video website sale, which was bizarre that they had stuff cheaper than Severin. Almost as much as it would be on their half-off sale. But So I really wanted this bad boy, so I picked it up here. As you can see, there's a professional wrestler on the back, and he's... Uh, Covered in blood. This is some kind of slasher flick from 1994 that I'm assuming never came out. Because it says on the back here that it sat in the executive producer's basement for the past 25 years. And they finished it in 2019. So I don't know what that means. My expectation is they had it filmed and never released it and then finished it. But there could be new footage in here from the last year to finish out the movie. I have no idea. But my expectation for this flick is I'm going to love it. I mean, look at this shit. There's a wrestling ring with fucking blood in it. It's called Mass Mutilator. It says um, there's some guys that I've never heard of from ECW and some dude named Brick Bronski from Sergeant Kabuki Man and Class of Newcomb High. Two movies I love, so it's likely I'm, I've seen this guy before. And those are right up my alley. So I'm going to preemptively say this movie is hitting four stars and it's going to be about a wrestling match gone wrong and then a crazy motherfucker killing people and apparently some kind of fucking spin kick on a staircase so let's get to the film and i'll give you after the little cut here what this movie actually was and what i actually thought about it and a final rating hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the reality portion of this video where I have to say that Mask Mutilator is not a four-star movie. However, it's really good. I mean, I really fucking liked it. I don't know if it's really good. But my expectations were this was going to be a really grisly, dark slasher movie that was lost in the mid-90s and remastered and brought back here. It's not quite the case. So I didn't really think there would be much modern-day stuff. And I'm going to say there's not, but the beginning of the movie and the end of the movie are bookend by footage that was shot, I believe, last year, 2019. And that footage is basically a framing device for the, for the movie where it's a podcast. You're interviewing one of the kids who survived a nightmare situation at a halfway house like 20 years ago. And there's a the beginning, they're interviewing him. And in the end, there's this real wild scene that was some guy who was a relative like the brother of one of the people who died in the massacre here and dude's fucking unchained and a really awesome performance i don't know who the guy is but it was fucking crazy but there's really less than five minutes of new footage like 2019 footage in there the rest of this takes place in was shot in 1994 and it takes place in a halfway house with a bunch of kids you kind of get their interpersonal relationships like broad strokes of who they are and then the killings begin now the gore there's some blood splattering couple severed limbs the gore is not like 
wild and crazy or anything. It's not, it's not like a fucking American guinea pig movie or some shit like that. It's real cheap, low budget stuff. The kill, the kills are pretty quick. A couple of them have some chokehold wrestling moves in there. But I gotta say, there's some fucking really good performances in this. Now, I know not all the kids are really good, but the ones that are, especially um, Tom Taylor, he's fucking awesome in this movie. He's the he's the kid who just comes to the to the halfway house after everybody already knows each other and shit. They like show him in a courthouse and the judge tells him his hair's too long to be in there. It's like real fucking dated, but <laughs> he, he gets this fucking little Dutch boy cut like Shawn Michaels at um what the fuck that uh, elimination chamber match where he won the belt in what 2002? I think it was Survivor Series 2002. But he totally had that awkward ass haircut. But so he comes in and he's real good. He's like a karate guy, and you can tell by his eventual spin kicks and the way he uses nunchucks. That's how you know a guy is a karate guy in one of these movies. But um, there's like your slutty girl, there's your good girl and her brother, there's a couple bully dudes, and there's the ex-wrestler guy who's running that halfway house thing, and there's the new guy, the count, the new counselor, whatever dude who comes in. Who they call textbook? Well, he the, the main wrestler, the guy who used to be the mask mutilator. When I'm getting two in the weeds here, but my point is the movie's kind of like Friday the Thirteenth Part Five, where the, you have these kids in like a halfway house thing, and there's all kinds of trouble between them and whatever, and people start dying, and there's a couple twists in the movie who the killer is, but really the crescendo of this movie is a real badass fight scene at the end that fucking has like a DDT in it, hip toss, fucking steel chair, all kinds of shit. And it's really fucking good and entertaining. That part really, it rises the rest of the movie up to be, I think a really fucking, a really good movie that's worth having in your collection. Um, I watched some of the behind the scenes stuff and they're talking about in some of the early kills, even where they're like, yeah, you got to take a bump here and you got to sell this and that. Like, the guys on the set had a real good time with this movie. Like, everybody was trying hard, even if they didn't do, like, an Oscar-winning performance or everything. Everybody was having fun from the footage, the behind-the-scenes footage they show in this. And, like, like everybody put a lot a lot into this. So, just, like, it's a lighthearted fucking slasher movie, if that makes any sense. So, I said my expectation was it was going to be this four-star grizzly like, Maniac, I didn't say this, but I was thinking Maniac with a fucking wrestling mask type movie. It's not that. However, it's, to me, a three and a half star flick. It's, I watched a movie recently called Sledgehammer, shot on VHS. And this is has a little more uh, craft than that. It's a little further above Z grade. I'd say it's like a, it's... It's like a C movie, if you know what I mean. Like, there's a B movie, Z movies. This is like a C movie, maybe a D and a half or whatever. But it's really entertaining. It actually left me in a really good mood after I watched it. Um, there's a lot. There's, um, I have to mention that, uh, what was the dude's name I was talking about? Brick Bronsky. Uh, I did recognize this guy after I saw him in this movie, and he directed it, I guess. But the dude has a fucking really manic, unhinged fucking performance near the end of the movie, this is the 1994 stuff, not talking about the crazy dude at the end. So as I'm saying, there's a couple really fucking memorable, really good performances in this. I loved it. Um, so it's not, it's a three and a half, not a four, but it's well worth adding to your collection. The special features, there's not a ton on there, but there's some good interviews with the dudes who worked on this movie. There's a short Mean Gene uh, Oakland interview with the Tom Taylor dude. And uh, it's pretty entertaining how the Tom Taylor dude's kind of stand in character when he rips a poster of the movie. But yeah, this is a good release. I love the fucking case art, man. Like, even if I didn't love this movie, which I did love this movie, but if I didn't even like this movie, I would keep this movie for this fucking case art in the black Blu-ray case. So I say check it out. It's a thumbs up for me. Expectation wasn't met, but... I I guess my expectations were just completely different from what the movie was. Whatever. So, expectation reality. The reality is this is a fucking great time. Go watch it. I think it's on Tubi if you don't want to buy it. But I say buy it.